Welcome to Retro Arcade Reviews. My name is John, and in this episode, we will be reviewing the arcade classic Road Blasters. Road Blasters is a combat racing game that was developed by Atari in 1987. If you live in the northeastern US and are an avid road tripper like myself, then there's one state you are more than familiar with, and that's the great state of New Jersey. You see, two of the longest interstates intersect here, the I-95 and the I-80. So if you're going pretty much anywhere in the US, you more than likely have driven on these two interstates, and if you you have, you more than likely pass through the state once or twice. Now why I'm bringing this up is that since New Jersey is such a thoroughfare, there was no shortage of rest stops and I could have sworn that every rest stop I stopped in New Jersey had a road blasters. I mean it was everywhere. So much so that I actually got tired of running into it time and time again and the alternatives weren't worth playing half the time. In this game, you have to make it to the finish line before your fuel runs out. You can blast enemy cars to help clear a path for you while avoiding enemy gunfire from roadside guns. They're basically like two kinds of enemies. Ones you can blast like the yellow cars and motorcycles and others you can't like purple cars and mines. You can replenish your fuel by grabbing green or red fuel globes found on the road or by destroying vehicles. According to the developers in an interview in Retro Gamer Magazine, the initial vision of the game was supposed to be a mashup between Pole Position and Spy Hunter. So instead of a truck that provides you with accessories and briefly stopping the action, a plane would swoop by and provide you with auxiliary weapons or accessories such as the UZ Cannon, Cruise Missile, and speed boost. There are about 50 levels, so strap in. Personally, I couldn't really make it far into the game. There are a few interesting facts about Road Blasters. One, the game was going to be originally named Future Vet. Second, I never ran into the large sit-down version of Road Blasters, but according to Exotica.org, the sit-down version has a plastic lens over the monitor which enlarges the screen to make it seem like a 25-inch CRT, similar to very early TV sets during the 1950s. Third, early in the game's release, if you're able to make it through all 50 levels and beat the game, the game would display a secret code which you could send back to the company for a free Road Blasters t-shirt. Lastly, Atari worked in conjunction with Matchbox Toys in a cross-promotional ad campaign that promoted both the new Roll Blasters toy line and the game. Now I do have a personal pet peeve about the game and it has to do with the story. The story supposedly is that you are a survivor in a post-apocalyptic future and you are engaged in life or death races on hostile roads. Kind of like Mad Max but the thing is that the original arcade flyer instruction manual nor the arcade game ever makes mention that it's a post-apocalyptic world. It doesn't even look like a post-apocalyptic world. This looks like a post-apocalyptic world. Even this looks like a post-apocalyptic world. This really doesn't. The first time it makes mention of this that I've seen is in the box of the Atari Lynx port and some game reviews. So I'm not sure if this is the original backdrop for the story. I feel like somebody added that in later on for the home ports. Road Blasters has been ported over to the Amstrad CPC, ZX Spectrum, Commodore 64, Amiga, Atari ST, NES, the Genesis, and the Lynx. It was included in Arcade's Greatest Hits, the Atari Collection 2 for the PlayStation, and part of the Midway Arcade Classics for the PS2, Xbox, GameCube, and the PC. The game also makes a humorous appearance in the movie Wreck-It Ralph. Which leads me to my next point. Even though there are combat driving games in my opinion that are better, like Lucky and Wild and Chase HQ, Road Blasters is more of a known title because of its cross-promotional advertising, sheer number, and ports. It also didn't only feel like an arcade game, but because of the chance of winning a prize, it kind of felt like a carnival game as well. So if you've been stuck in traffic after work for about two hours and need to release some of that pent-up road rage you've been building up, I say, play this game, shoot down some enemy vehicles, and let me know what you think. 